All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to make a start on bag J to put together the storage boxes on the back of the wrecker. There's a lot to cover in bag J, so we're going to split it up into two parts. Well, actually three parts, as we'll also have a video covering the powered actuator kit with its electronics too. In bag J, we have a pair of rubber chocks and five screws bags. As usual, they all get tipped into pudding pots, so they're all easy to get at. One thing to watch out for, one of the bags will most likely have a small bag of magnets stuck to it, so make sure to separate them before opening the bag, or you're going to have a cluster of screws to pick apart. Right, step 77, the centre storage box. We're going to need KK3, the shelf, JJ2, the box, 4 HH7 hinges, then for screws we have 4 M2x4s, 8 M3x6s with a low profile head, 2 3x8 self-tappers, 8 large 3mm washers, 4 2mm washers, 2 M3 plane nuts, and a magnet. Don't forget to keep the magnet away from the stash of screws. The magnet has a cup to slot into on the shelf. There's two cups to make a left and a right handed assembly and for this one we need to use the left hand cup as we're looking at the shelf. To keep the magnet in we use two of the M2 screws and the small washers. They just thread in either side of the magnet. Snug up the screws and the magnet isn't going to go anywhere. Next on the back of the box we need to fit the two nuts. There's a matching pair of hex shaped holes on either side, again to make a left and a right handed assembly, so make sure you get the right ones. The nuts just sit in the holes, then we use another two M2 screws and small washers to stop them from falling out. Hinges next, they just drop into the slots on the outside of the box and we use the low profile screws and 3mm washers to hold them in place. This time though, we need to consider how tight we do up the screws. If you fully tighten them, you can completely lock up the hinges. I found later on in the build, these hinges want to be just tight enough so they don't quite flop around. The hinges for the battery and MFC control access need to be a bit tighter so the doors actually stay open, same with the rearmost doors too. You'll have to experiment a bit to get them just so. After the four hinges are installed, we can slot in the shelf and thread in the two self-tappers. Nip them up, and that's one box complete. Step 78, the other middle storage box. This uses all the same parts as step 77, the only difference is it's a mirror image. The magnets and nuts fit on the other side of the assembly. So here we go, one mirror image storage box. Step 79, the front storage boxes. This time we need two JJ1s, the boxes, a KK2, the MFC control box shelf, which I don't think we're going to be fitting just yet. If we skip ahead a bit, you can see we're going to need to run the wires up through the box and behind the shelf before we fit the actual control box. So we're going to wait to fit it a bit later. We still need the boxes though, and two HH10 hinges. Then for screws, we have four M3x6s with the low profile heads, two 3x8 self-tappers, four 2x6 self-tappers, four large M3 washers, four 2mm washers, and two magnets. Most of this is roughly the same as the middle boxes. The magnets have a pocket that they sit in, and we use two of the 2x6 self-tappers with the small washers to hold them in. At the top, we drop in a hinge and use the low-profile screws and large washers. And other than the MFC shelf, the two assemblies are the same. We're going to fit the shelf later when we can run the wires. We'll need to put the two 3x8 self-tappers off to the side with the shelf. Step 80, the rear storage boxes. We need two KK1s, two R3s, a U5 for the actuator switch, and four HH7 hinges. Then there's eight low-profile M3x6s, two 3x8 self-tappers, four 2x8 self-tappers, four 2x6 self-tappers, eight large M3 washers, four 2mm washers, and two magnets. Also, since I can't really hide it, we're also going to need the switch for the actuator kit. The switch overrides the raise and lower for the lift. You don't really need it, but since the mounts are already there, we might as well fit it. We're not going to go into full detail here, but suffice to say we need to fit it to the U5 mount so it's ready to fit to the box. 
The magnets fit to the box much like the others. We slot the magnet in and install two 2x6 two self-tappers with the small washers. Then on one of the boxes we pop in a switch mount lining up the holes with the holes in the back of the box. And we thread in two 3x8 self-tappers nipping them up. Next we have R3. Now I'm not entirely sure what it's for. It fits on the back of the box and has a post sticking up from the top. A bit strange, but it gets attached with two 2x8 two self-tappers. I did find later in the build, when going around tidying up the wiring, it makes a great little area to stash some excess. You can fold the wires up and push it up past the mounting post to keep it out of the way. The last bits to go on are the hinges. Just like before, they slot into their slots and we use the low profile M3s with the large washers. A rather nice assembly, the mount for the switch really makes it look extra tidy, rather than just sticking it in some random spot. The other box is exactly the same of course, except no switch. Step 81, body parts, or at least that's what Tamiya call them. For plastic, we're going to need R1, R8, R12, R13 and R14. For fixings, there's two M2x5s four 3 by 8 self-tappers and two 2 by 8 self-tappers. First then we take the box R12 and partly thread in the two M2x5s into the posts on the side. Then we offer up R14 and nip up the screws. I'm guessing it's in two parts because of the complex shape. Being in two parts does make it easier to mould. Being Tamiya of course they do fit very well so you'd never know. The box then sits on the platform interlocking with some ridges. On the bottom we insert the two 3x8 self-tappers and nip them up. Next to the box we have R1 which gets attached with two 2x8 two self-tappers. Now I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be, but I'm guessing it's probably some sort of air pump to fill the cylinders that fit under the platform. And speaking of the cylinders, they offer up under the platform and get fitted with the last two 3x8 self-tappers. Now I think these parts would look good with a bit of paint, some silver detail, maybe a bit of colour on the air tanks, just to avoid the classic problem of being a bit of a black hole when you look inside the chassis. Step 82, fitting the centre boxes. For screws we have two M3x10s, 12 M3x6s and two M3 plain nuts. For plastic all we need is a Y2 cross brace and of course the centre boxes. Now before we fit the boxes we need to attach the brace to the right side. The braces have a rather neat little slot that you drop a nut into that stops it spinning and aligns it with the hole. So we drop one nut in and offer up the brace to the inside of the right hand box and we thread in an M3 by 10. For the time being we're just going to leave it slightly loose then we'll go around and tighten them all up later when it's all together. To fit, all we do is offer up the box to the chassis, lining up the metal mounts with the holes in the box. Then we use the M3x6s to attach it. Now Tamiya wants us to start with the bottom two holes and work up, but as long as you start threading the screws in loosely, then nip them up when they're all in, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in. Now we can spin the chassis round and offer up the other box and start screwing in the screws. Don't forget the top one for the cross brace is an M3x10, otherwise they're all M3x6s. Once they're all in, we can go around and nip them up nice and tight, making them snug, plus a little bit extra. Step 83, the front boxes. Now we've got a similar set of screws for this one, just different quantities. We've got 10 M3x10s, 4 M3x6s and 3 M3 plain nuts. For other bits we need the MFC control box, the two self-tappers and a shelf from the previous step. For plastic we have two Y2 cross braces, of which I only have one because I didn't read the instructions properly. You'll just have to use your imagination for the other one. There's the front boxes and the platform with the small box and the pump. Right, we'll start with the right hand box where we need to attach the platform with the small box and the pump. Once the MFC control box goes in, it's going to block the screws. The ends of the platform are just like the cross braces with a slot for some nuts. So all we do is drop a couple of nuts in and attach them to the box with M3x10s. Going against the usual advice, we'll nip these ones up right now as access is going to be a bit tricky later. At the top, we'll fit the cross brace. 
Actually, you should fit two of them, but as mentioned, I missed the second one in the diagram. They fit just the same as all the other ones, with a nut in the slot and an M3 by 10. I did eventually notice the missing brace. I think it's when looking at the diagrams for the bodywork and noticing an extra one. It's not too much of a problem though, you just need to loosen a few screws and it will slot straight in. To fit the box when you're using an MFC, you're going to need to feed the control wires through the big hole at the bottom as you offer the box up to the chassis. Make sure they're not going to get trapped or pinched in anything as you're doing up the screws. And for the screws, Tamiya recommends starting with the rearmost ones, then doing the rest. But just like before, as long as you install them all loosely first, then tighten them, it really doesn't matter too much. Once they're in, we can see about fitting the MFC control box. To connect the box, first we need to take it apart to get at the connectors. Not the best design, but I suppose it works. At least all the connectors are different sizes, so you don't have to think about which goes where. With it back together, we need to give the bottom a good clean with some alcohol to remove any grease and oil, and we also need to give the top of the shelf a good clean too. Now we can use some servo tape to stick it down. You can just use the servo tape that comes with the kit. It's not really a high stress area, so it's going to work just fine. Now we just slide the shelf in and install the two self tappers. The gap at the back of the shelf isn't very big, so you might have to wiggle the wires a bit to get them to lay flat, just so you can get the shelf all the way in. If it's right, it should go in with very little resistance. I think I missed the record button while installing the other box, but other than the shelf it's essentially the same. Install all the screws loosely, then go round and tighten them up. Step 84, the rear boxes. This time we need 8 M3x6s, 2 M3x8s with low profile heads, 2 M3 plane nuts, and then for plastic we need a Y2 cross brace, and of course we need the two rear boxes. Right, ignore all the extra wiring, they're for the lift power and limit switches, which we're going to cover in a separate video. The box just offers up like the front ones, and we use the M3x6s to attach it to the brackets on the chassis. You should also fit that cross brace first, but of course I missed that step, again. I'm thinking I probably recorded this well after bedtime, so it was a bit dozy. Anyway, not a big problem. Actually, this time I noticed something was wrong when I went to attach the other box and still had the brace left over. I even ended up looking at the manual to double check. It's an easy workaround though. We just need to attach the brace onto this side before offering it up. But again, just to prove I should have already gone to bed, I repositioned the camera to record the fitting, then stop the recording. Perfect. Anyway, with the cross member on, we need to offer up the box and start installing screws. The only thing to watch out for is the screws for the cross member are the ones with the low profile head. Not a big deal if you use the wrong ones, it's mainly just so if you're using the electric actuator kit, the control box will actually fit all the way in. Otherwise, using a normal screw head, it won't quite give enough clearance when the door shuts. Now we just need to go around and nip up all the screws, and that's the storage boxes fitted. Next time we'll take a closer look at the actuator kit with all its bits and pieces, then we'll get back to the truck and attach the rear bodywork, which really starts to make the truck come together. Right, as always then, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!